Hello and welcome to Project and Resources first video tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm not really going to show you how to do much but more or less explain how things work in relation to MIDI and sequencing and sampling and all of that. First off you should know a little bit about how MIDI works. MIDI is generated in real time typically and it works kind of like a graphics processor for you know, generating real-time graphics for your games. So you know how if you're playing a game and sometimes it will slow down, it will lag, that's because the computer cannot handle creating the graphical information fast enough to put it out to your screen. And the same thing happens with MIDI. You notice sometimes if you listen to a MIDI file which has the extension of .mid or .midi, sometimes it will slow down that's because everything you hear from the MIDI file is generated in real time. Now sometimes you'll also notice if you stop a MIDI file while it's playing it will have a little bit of a reverb or an echo as opposed to a regular file will just cut off. That's because sometimes there are also real time generated reverb or echo effects for these files. Now if you listen to any of the music I write um, on my website tommycraft.com or any of the soundtracks in project and resource.com for our games, you will notice that these sound a lot better than a standard MIDI file. And that is because to create these songs, I used a sampler. And that would be something like this, which is Contact 3. Now, for some of the older stuff, I used Colossus, but recently I have gotten Contact 3. It's a very good sampler. Basically, what Contact or Colossus or anything else does, there's a lot of different samplers out there you can get and there's a lot of different samples for the samples that samplers that you can get and basically what it does is it interprets a MIDI signal from a host program like Sibelius which is what I use to write music and then it will play an audio file corresponding to that signal so if I just go into contact here and I open up a violin sound and I hit a C note on the virtual keyboard it will play a C. Now the same thing happens in Sibelius. Because basically in Sibelius, let's go open Sibelius. Okay, now that we have Sibelius open, Let's create a new score real quick. All I have to do is click on the paper button up here, and then you can select from a number of different types of manuscripts, as they call it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the P key and go down to Piano and hit Finish. Now, here in Sibelius, we have our standard staff, uh, treble and bass for piano. What happens is, in Sibelius, when you click um, when you click on the staff, it will create a MIDI signal and it will send it out to Contact and it will tell Contact which audio file to play. So if I click right here on a C note, it's going to play the C on the violin over here. Now the reason it sounds like a violin and not a piano is because I have loaded the violin sound into Contact instead of the piano sound. Now what is happening is when they created Contact, they essentially usually rent out a large concert hall and they would record different instruments playing certain notes. So they would have recorded one violin or a group of violins or an ensemble and they would have recorded them playing each of these notes. And then what they do is they put them into their sampler and they essentially sign them to each key on the virtual keyboard so that way when you click a note in Sibelius or any other notation or sequencing program it knows which note to play over here. Now, this is obviously a lot more advanced and it sounds a lot better than standard MIDI. Um, it's also how a lot of current composers, especially indie ones who don't have the money to rent out an actual orchestra, this is how they get their sounds. This is how I get my sounds. Um, it's a very good way and it works very well. And as you can see, uh, Contact comes with a lot of different sounds just for um, 
orchestra is essentially here, and it's got strings and woodwinds and brass, percussion, there's synth sounds, everything you need. Pretty much. So what happens now? How does the sound get from Sibelius to contact to your speakers? Well, what you have to do, unless you have an external MIDI device, um, if you have an, an external device, which I do, which is a pain to use because I use a laptop primarily, so it is a pain to hook it up and unplug it and plug it in every time I want to write music, and then it just totally kills my ambition. But what you can do if you have an external MIDI device, like mine is FireWire, you can plug it into the FireWire and install the drivers, make sure everything's ready to go there, and you can go in here in your audio and MIDI settings, and your MIDI, and you can turn on routing for that device, and you can do the same in Sibelius. Now, what I'm doing is a little bit different. I have downloaded MIDI Yoke, which is a fairly common and standard uh, virtual MIDI router. Now, essentially, this does the same thing as an actual uh, external MIDI device, except it's virtual. It's like taking a cable from contact and plugging it straight into Sibelius. Now, I will, uh, you can go in here into, I use Firefox, yay Firefox, and go to midiox.com, and you can get their program Midiox and MIDI Yoke, and you can get MIDI Yoke from over here, and they'll tell you about it and the latest news, and you scroll down and you can get MIDI Yoke. And MIDI Yoke is a really cool program. Once you have it installed, you have to reboot. And you can go over here in the contact and go to File, Audio, and MIDI Settings, and over here for MIDI, you see now that you have all these in from MIDI Yoke, 1 through 8, and out from MIDI Yoke, out to MIDI Yoke. Now, if you go on the Sibelius, you'll also find this is the same thing has happened. If you go to play, playback, and input devices, um, you'll see that there are out to MIDI Yoke, 1 through 8. Now, basically, in, uh, in contact, what you have over here, is you want to turn on in from MIDI yoke 2 or 1, I use 2 because I'm weird and then you also want to turn on out to MIDI yoke 2 and hit OK or 1, out to MIDI yoke 1 depending on whichever you use, it always corresponds so if you use in from MIDI yoke 1, use out to MIDI yoke 1 if you use in from MIDI yoke 1 and 2 then you also want to turn on 1 and 2 down here in the out so then you just hit OK and it's outputting in from MIDI yoke 1 or 2, out to MIDI yoke 1 or 2. And you can go over here in Sibelius, play back in input devices, and choose use yes or no on out to MIDI yoke 1 through 8. So since I'm using 2, I'll just turn on 2 here, out to MIDI yoke 2, and use is set to yes, as you'll see. Now over here you'll notice that sound set is set to general MIDI. Don't worry about that doesn't realize that we're using a sampler. So we hit yes and OK. And now what's happening is the sound is that Sibelius is linked directly to contact and that it'll create a MIDI signal and it will output it through MIDI yoke and it will come into contact. It will hit the note on this keyboard from the MIDI signal and it will play the sound. So As you can see, it works. And that is the basics of, um, of how to create songs and Sibelius and Contact and how to get realistic sounds. Now, obviously, there's many other samplers you can use. Like I said, I used to use Colossus, which isn't bad, but it's a bit dated now, and I do believe Contact sounds a lot better. Um, East West also makes a lot of other samplers and I know that well they make a lot of other sample sets which generally comes with its own program for the samples like Colossus did it had its own program called Colossus for all the samples where you couldn't bring any other samples into it that you might have bought which is really nice about contact because you can bring any sample set in here that you have bought and it's just, it's really powerful that way and it's a lot of good features and um but that's basically it for how it works. And um, if you have any questions, just email me at tommy at projectnresource.com. Um, you can post on the forums for projectnresource.com.
and uh, this is only the first in a series of tutorials I plan to make on writing music and audio and how it works. So do look forward to more and thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and helpful.